Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. And over the last couple of months, I've been thinking deeply about certain topics surrounding South African cricket. The recent issue of Cricket Fanatics Magazine was all about deep thinking. And I thought that I wanted to obviously try and go into certain topics and more of a way of thinking as fans when we talk about cricket and particularly, obviously, South African cricket. We find ourselves, obviously, in South Africa in a very unique situation compared to other countries, particularly, I would say, the, the top three countries. We don't find ourselves in, a, in the same position when it comes to international cricket and prioritizing certain formats. And I thought that on today's show, I wanted to dive into something that is very important, and I think talking about a topic like this is maybe just to plant a seed of how to think differently about the game and how to think differently about certain aspects of the game. And on today's show, I want to talk about um, when a player is ready for a national call-up, how do we identify that? How do we look at that? When we, obviously, as fans, we speak a lot about selections and that kind of kind of really dominates our conversations when it comes to cricket and as fans we talk a lot about selection and it's the one thing that I feel we is easier to debate it's easier to discuss and it's something that isn't right or wrong because whatever way you go there can be a reason for it or there can be a thought process behind why we've decided on certain people, certain players at a certain particular time. So on today's show, I want to talk about what, when a player is ready for national call-up, what are the signs we look for? Now, there are some cross-references I'll probably make as well to other sports because I do think that selection is, a, is, is something that is very unique, obviously, to sport. And when you look at it, you can cross-reference it maybe with the real world when it comes to maybe in the business world when you are trying to employ certain people for a certain company. There are certain characteristics that people will maybe look for. Now, I think a national coach or a selector in certain countries, we don't have that anymore. We used to have a selection panel. But now we have the coaches that are very, very involved with the selection process. So... I thought that I will try to get your insight as well and, and see what you guys think about this particular topic. What do you guys look for when you do decide to pick a certain player? When you guys do come in the live chat and on social media and on our social media platforms and you comment on our posts and you comment in the live chat and give your suggestions for certain players, I want to know what your criteria is and what you guys think of when it comes to selection of players. So that's what the show is going to be about. We are, are we are going to do a lot of these type of shows that are going to make us or try and help us think differently about the game. I think it's very important to do these type of shows uh, To that it's not just the generic daily shows that we are usually doing. I'm going to be also giving it to you guys three times a week uh, as cricket is um, toning down for the season. And we'll pick it up, obviously, more daily as the Cricket World Cup comes along because the season is winding down and there isn't going to be much stories to cover. So I'm going to try and my best to give you guys three three shows per week uh, as a minimum, um, dependable on various factors and things that are going on in the cricket world. I will decide to do that. So just keep your notifications on um, because you will be notified immediately when we do go live so that you guys can catch all our shows when we are live. So don't forget, as you come in here, uh, the first thing you guys have to do is obviously subscribe and click that notification bell for that particular reason, of course. We are going to go through some of the article, or at least I think one article I do want to discuss on today's show is our main article from the... Um, from our latest issue of Cricket Fanatics Magazine Monthly. Uh, it's important that we do try and cover certain angles. And Russell Domingo particularly gave us some insight into certain things. And I want to cover that particular story and maybe just go through that um, if there's still time. And I think maybe uh, then we can get a little bit deeper into the discussion of the topic at hand. So... Remember that you guys also have to subscribe to the channel 
click that notification bell, but also go and download that latest issue and you can get all our topics that we discuss on the in, on the screen and in the description, the links are there. And that's where you guys can get a lot of, more of an in-depth um, understanding and read for you guys to obviously improve your knowledge and maybe insights on the game. I learn a lot every single month from every single article that it gets handed in to us. I try and get a full view from the people that are very important within our industry, players and, and staff and et cetera, and coaches and all of that, because they give us an insight and a different way to look at things when it comes to this particular show and when it comes to thinking about this game. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. I am looking forward to discussing this topic with you. Guys. Very good evening and welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Moedi. This is the show where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. And today, I want to discuss uh, a certain aspect of cricket that we maybe skip over. And when and that is, when is a player ready for a national call-up? And I want to try and get your insights on that and what you guys think as well. And I want to try and provide a platform where we can maybe have a little bit more of a deep thinking mindset when it comes to the game, rather than the surface level discussions that a lot of fans have when it comes to cricket in South Africa. Now, there's an article in that I want to read out to you guys that was written in our latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine, and that is from Russell Domingo. And I thought that Stuart did a great job in capturing the ideas of Russell and what he thinks about the game. And I think that this is a, a good starting point to try and understand what it, what a winning coach that has won the four-day competition this season. He's at the, probably you could say now, the biggest franchise in the country with the amount of sponsorships they get and the amount of players that are in their system. And he's very experienced, obviously, with the, with the fact that he's been on the in the coaching staff at the Sunrise Eastern Cape, who won the trophy this year in SA20 and last season. He's also... Uh, used to be at the Warriors. He's also under 19. Um, he was also a part of the under 19 team and the men's national team, as well as Bangladesh and the Lions, as it says here. So we had a conversation with him, um, Stuart did, and he gave us some nice insights into just how you can think about the game. And I want to start here with this particular um, quote. He speaks about the success of the union is largely due to recruitment strategy as well as a consistent pipeline of young players coming through. And this particular quote is important because it gives you some insight into what a coach thinks about when he's selecting a squad. He says, I believe in giving as many local based players as many opportunities as possible. We are fortunate that we have a strong schools and club system as well as a good structure at the Lions which helps develop their talent. If the players do not get that opportunity to play, they will most likely leave the union. And they've created a very competitive mentality at the Lions. The Lions kind of have this, this system from school level right up into club cricket, right into provincial and, and, and franchise cricket, where they have a massive pool of players that they can pick from. So automatically, there's a competitive edge that is being created at the franchise and throughout the country, throughout the province. So automatically, there's number one, step one, that that's particularly what I look at. What I look at is a player's mentality. And when I speak about mentality, I'm talking about making the right choices in difficult situations, how you jump back from difficult scenarios and adversity rather than how you do when things are going well because when everything's going well things are rosy you're in a good spell it's not so difficult to make bad decisions you know it's not so difficult to make good decisions i mean so it's it's much easier to make good decisions when you're in a sturdy 
con um, situation. So, or you find yourself in 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 a in a good purple patch or in a good good patch of cricket. Um, you you you're in great form, and it's harder to jump out of a, a difficult patch of form than it is obviously to keep going when you're in when you're in a good space and you're surrounded by good people. But in cricket, we've come to notice that a lot of people rather fail than they succeed. And um, there is a lot of other aspects to cricket that helps a player succeed. Some may call it luck, but I also think that you make your own luck in this game. And I think that is a comparison when it comes to any sport. I think that a good analogy I could probably make or a good comparison I can make is in football. When... You can look at a team like, at the moment, like Manchester United, who is struggling to find form and play a style of football that is relatable and they are dealing with so many things like injuries, etc. It can be very difficult for you to find yourself, to take yourself out of that scenario. But I've seen a common trend with, with footballers, with certain footballers and certain teams, when things are going great, they are happy, they're smiling and confidence is up and they're doing well and they go on a good run. But as soon as things start to not go their way, particularly I'm talking about Manchester United because I support them, so I know a little bit more about it. You can see the body language, how it drops, and you can see that the reaction to to bad scenarios isn't that great. Now, that's a good lesson to learn because in cricket, you have to learn how to overcome adversity and hurdles and difficult times because you are going to face them more than you're going to face the good times. It's not very often that you're going to find players score consistently consecutive half centuries or take consecutive fifers in every single match over a long period of time. There will be bursts and pockets of success. And if you look in the past, you can rarely tell that that is the case. With a guy like Quentin the Cock, he's a good example. He scored... He, if you look at his runs that he scored over his career, you can see that he scores in patches and then he goes through dips and then he scores in uh, he scores again. And his, his his top scores can almost be grouped in like four or five in, innings in a row or three innings in a row. And then he'll go on a little bit of a dip. Even a player like Heinrich Klaassen, who's in the form that he's in, you can almost predict that at some point there is going to be a dip in form and he's, he's going to go a little bit dry when it comes to runs. It's happened to him already this season i know he's had a great sa20 and he's having a good ipl but he does go through his own dips in form and luckily you also have a situation where you're playing multiple formats in cricket so you you can kind of use a world format to kind of get yourself back into form in a way a lot of people said that about timba yeah he was he kind of got himself back into form again by playing odi cricket and then test cricket as well and he kind of went on a little bit of a run in those two formats and you you have that opportunity in cricket to be able to do so it's concerning that this game is becoming more and more t20 focused because in the end at the end of the day what happens then is that t20 is probably the one of is a, is a very difficult form to 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 play yourself out of a bad patch I feel that T20 is a lot more of a confidence game. You can't really buckle down and fight your way through bad patches of form. You have to just go out there and maybe get some, some your 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 arms swinging and and hopefully some of those balls connect and get you on a roll in an inning. So, yeah, with the, with the game going towards more T20, I think that's going to kind of stunt some of our younger players because they are, are playing at school level and at, and at provincial level. If majority of them are playing at school level, only T20 cricket and majority T20 cricket are not learning those skills of being patient, fighting through difficult periods, I think that's going to hinder a lot of the players in the future. Now, how does that tie into when players ready for a national call-up? Now, for me... I have to say that you have to look at all three formats. If you look at the guys that have been getting debuts for the Proteus over the last few years, hardly any of them have been only T20 players, actually. None of them have been really only T20 players or have only performed in T20. They've managed to have an all-round game in domestic four-day, 
50 over as well as T20 cricket and a lot of them have been selected as a result. You'd find a player getting a national call-up having only played for a cricket or 50 over more often than someone that has only played T20 cricket. So that's why I think that the learnings that players get from playing four day and from playing 50 over is so important for me to analyze a player and say whether he's ready for the pressures of international cricket because that jump is massive domestically already so to get yourself more ready to get yourself more mentally ready for the for the pressures of international cricket you need to at least i feel play three or three formats of the game or at least two of them particularly 50 over and the four day game I just want to go into more of this article from Russell because I do think that it's it's a it's a very good article that was written, some good insights. Uh, the excellent organizational structure at the Lions has recently seen them win the four-day competition. Over the course of the season, we have seen young players such as Conor Esterhuizen, Quinn Amapaka perform for the team. The Lions have also appointed former players such as Hashim Amla and batting coach Alan Donald as the bowling coach. Hashim Amla has previously worked at the Cape Cobras, Cape Town Blitz and MI Cape Town before joining the Lions. He's arguably one of the best batters South Africa has ever produced. When asked about how Amla has adapted to coaching at the Lions, Domingo stated, he's a very good coach. We all know that as a player, he was very calm and I believe that this can be instilled into the players. He's a very balanced person who, who accepts success and failure in equal measures. That is important right there. He accepts success and failures in equal measures. And he understands the pressures of playing provincial and international cricket. So important to give our players that understanding. So by the time they get their international call up, they already have some insight from a person that has done it all that can give them some insight on how to handle the pressures between the two. Um, disciplines i would say recently lasson domingo stated that he believes that for more four-day cricket should be played across the board domingo qualified his views by stating cricket south africa is obviously under financial strains however we only play seven first class games per season which is not enough i agree with him the lack of four-day cricket is not only hindering our provincial sides but also affecting the men's test side a possible solution to this issue could be increasing the amount of matches from seven to ten where each team could possibly play each other twice. There have been discussions with Cricket South Africa to see how we could um, pull the resources together to help create more four-day cricket. And I think creating more four-day cricket is already one stepping stone towards readying players for national call-ups. I've always said that I think four-day cricket is so important to helping players develop a strong mentality, a strong technique, and understanding the 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 gap between international and domestic cricket now it's not going to close the gap completely we've seen with players going from four day cricket straight into the test side to go play in new zealand from a saa and kind of almost skipping the the, the that medium bracket of playing emerging saa a few games for them before making the national call up. We saw the gap between those players and how they struggled um, in New Zealand. Not all of them. Some of them really took to test cricket quite well and quite comfortably. But I'm I'm almost con I'm certain and convinced that four day cricket had a massive, massive role in doing that. So more four day cricket is so important, I think. Uh, to take this team a little bit further. Russell also goes further into talking a little bit about SA20, but that you guys can read in the article when you guys do download the issue. It's 100% free that you inbox every single month, as I said. But let me get into some of your comments and see what you say as well. Abinaf says, <clears throat> why nowadays South Africa plays more, players are more inclined towards league cricket rather than playing ODIs and tests? Now, I don't think this statement is 100% true. Um, recently, Kaki Surabada spoke about how he, well, how he thinks teams should play more cricket. He recently um, spoke in an article. If I can try to find it quickly um, to get the quotes exact for you guys. Um, let me see if I can find it quickly. 
he speaks about how basically it's a cricket shot himself in the foot um in a way uh, his comments were it was very un very unacceptable and remains unacceptable to date he told the press trust in uh, of india it was obviously a planning issue it is unacceptable that is all i would say about that that's about the, the players going to new zealand or picking the leagues so we are getting that from the players that you know that it's unacceptable uh it's not fair to it's it's not fair to go at the players. It is not fair to say that players are being picked and they got free test caps. I don't think it is fair to put that criticism on the players. They simply got asked to go there. And at the end of the day, they were not going to say no. That is planning issue. And it has to go down to what is happening at the high level. What happened with South Af Cricket South Africa? It was basically a double book. That was what it was end of the day we didn't really get a choice to even go there to new zealand because of the importance of the sa20 it's like shooting yourself in the foot so cricket comes from test cricket and test from my perspective is the best format i would imagine all players who play all formats would say test cricket is their favorite format that is the same for me as well so i don't think that players chose she would choose it it's, they kind of don't have an option yes the money is good but I think that SA20 really did put pressure on the players to make that decision. They had no choice. And like KG spoke about over there, I think a lot of players feel that way as well. I remember Aidan Markham speaking to me as well at the SA20 launch, captain's press conference, speaking about he, that he, if it was his decision, he would have gone to New Zealand. You know, um, So that's another player that you can talk about that is well respected in south african cricket that has said the same thing we need to find a way on how to make this work because i think that cricket livelihood and survival has a lot to do with us preserving four day cricket in the country and red bull cricket and i think that the cults leagues like the under 23s leagues etc going down there playing three-day cricket will be important and that that tournament stays alive, that our youngsters coming through get to at least play Colts cricket. They brought that system back, which I think is so in crucial to this land, the South African cricket landscape. And also the Division 2. But also, I think another option is A tours, emerging tours, more four-day cricket being played there is going to be crucial to the development because there is no Red Bull cricket at schoolboy level and there is no Red Bull cricket at um, club level anymore. So we need to find other ways on how to fast track youngsters from school into competitive Red Bull cricket. Kenny says, not every player gets backed game after game. Most don't. Most get the odd chances. The telling thing for me is their attribute to disappointment, to not succeeding right away or getting dropped. I agree over there. Whether they are actively working on their weaknesses or rather than just coaching that's also a very important point we're going to see a lot of situations where under 19 players are going to get fast tracked into players 11s or into fans 11s because we've seen them completely dominate their own age groups we've seen players rush to wanting to see Deva Brevas, Gwenamapaka and so many other younger players get um, currently Steve Stork as well people have been pushing them to get starts in the national team I don't think that it's the right way to look at things when and that's why I say domestic cricket is going to be the crucial filtering system for us to realize if a player is ready or not there was a youngster that was doing great things at an 19 level possibly some people would have probably labeled him as better than Diova Brevis as a talent and that was Daniel Smith he was the captain of the under 19 team he missed out on the World Cup on age he's gone to domestic cricket and it's taken him some time as talented as he is it's taken him some time to find consistency at a domestic level playing against senior players and he's really developing his game in an all-round way 
Tristan Stubbs was lucky enough to be able to get the chance to be filtered into the system. Getting chances domestically, proving his way, proving, allowing, not proving himself, but it's more about giving, they gave him the time to be able to develop his game. And I've seen how his game has evolved into a 360 type of game. And we're seeing the same thing with Jordan Herman, who's another talented player. Um, he's starting to develop an all-round game. Same as Matthew Bretzky. We're seeing these talents now getting a chance and an opportunity. They weren't pushed into T20 cricket, given a chance to play for the protest at T20 level at the early stage, getting their protest um, call-up, and then becoming one-sided players. These players are developing their all-round game, which I feel is so important to whether you're ready. Because for international call up and for national level we need to pick the best of the best the best the 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 most productive way to do that is to make sure that your game is covered and that your game is almost perfect from an all-round perspective that you can adapt your game to any situation and the best way to do that is by playing multiple formats uh tabo says sometimes the wrong players don't pick a Players don't pick ahead of the more deserving ones. Don't get picked ahead of the more deserving ones. Kelly says, Alan Donald as a bowling coach as well. Class coaching. Now. Okay, that's about the article. Brandon says, let's not under underestimate the power of luck, fate, luck, and timing. That's also true. Luck and timing is also very, very important. I'll give you an example. Because I've been tracking these two, two twin, the, these twins, um, Marco Janssen and Dwan Janssen. I remember at the, I was at a Kaya Majola week and both of them were in the team, in the, in the under-19 team. Dwan had a better start to the tournament, I would say, than Marco. And Dwan was looking like he was a little bit of a head at Marco at that particular point in time. The way I know this is when the final teams were picked, the SA Schools and the SA Colts team, Marco was actually picked up in the SA Colts team, not the SA Schools team. Um, and he performed extremely well in that in that team to get no, to, to get his name onto the scene. Duan got injured in that tournament. And I feel that if Duan was fit and continued his form, he would have probably been in the SA Schools team. And we could have seen a completely different change to who would have gotten the opportunity to play international cricket over the other. So that's another way to look at it. There was another tournament where Lifa and Tanzi and Gerald Kutsia were almost going head to head for the fastest bowlers and most lethal bowlers in that tournament. And we saw Gerald Kutsia's career go like that and Lifa and Tanzi got an injury and his career went a little bit downwards. That's another opportunity that missed because of luck. Um so it does that does take that has to be taken into consideration as well. Um, the luxury of nurturing players and grooming them is only available in a successful team sitting on top of the world that is not us right now unfortunately well we're in an interesting situation where our international experienced players have retired majority of them so there are positions available for youngsters to get a chance but we need to improve the amount of test cricket we play uh, I think that Test Cricket will be the perfect game for us to blood young talent. But at the moment, we don't play enough Test Cricket. And when we do play Test Cricket, there's only two Test Match series. I would like to see more, three to four Test Matches at least uh, in a series. but And more Test Matches played. But unfortunately, that ain't happening anytime soon, I don't think. Uh, Superhero Riser says, hello. I said, how's it back, bro? Uh, um, Wakas says hi, Hari, bro, and everyone. How's it, Wakas? Um, uh, Kelly says they'd play more games at less favorable venues with more four day games. Some guys, hundreds, are skewed towards inland high foul pitches and they struggle on coastal surfaces. That is also something that we need to look at. So, when you do look at players, a good tip is to also take note of where they score their, their runs. Uh, you can tell by like when you look at someone, um, particularly like Reina Fontonda over the last few years, um, before this 
the last couple of seasons, he's been he scored all his runs in Bloemfontein at a period in time, but he since has scored more runs in coastal venues. Theo Brevis recently has been scoring a lot of his runs in Pretoria, um, and that's something that he's going to have to get used to to playing in other venues and scoring there too. We need to be able to to see where players score their runs too. It's also a very important factor in to take to take into account um, when it comes to this. Um, this team so there's a lot of things that we need to take into consideration um when it comes to players um yeah when it comes to certain players um and when it comes to understanding when they are ready Um, Katie says, Don't, didn't Marco only make, yes, he made calls. Um, he made the calls team, and that's what I'm saying. For example, with Duan, I'm saying could have made uh, the school's team if he had continued his form. Marco made calls, and he went on to have a great career, even though he only made calls. But what could have happened if Duan made the SA team, SA, SA school's team, and then went on to go make, to to go have a different career. We could have seen a different Janssen brother come onto the onto the scene. Marco's career went like that um, after he, he got that opportunity. So injuries and all of those come to play as well. Um, Superhero Rises says, which SA20 team has most fans? Um, it's very difficult to say which one has the most fans because not all the teams it's not easy to see from the stadiums because not all the stadiums are as big as newlands as and pretoria and newlands and centurion and the wanderers i would say that it's most likely the super kings that probably have the most amount of fans just purely by population in joburg how many people are there and how many people go to the games consistently? I would probably say that it would be Joe Big Super Kings or in my Cape Town as the two teams that probably have the most amount of fans. Kelly saying most of the younger players aren't playing leagues during the SA season. They, they weren't allowed to decline SA20 though. Also important that the cricket IQ and game management develops all the time. We need to give players, yes, we need to give players, young players particularly, an opportunity um, to the opportunity to develop that IQ and to develop those skills when it comes to the game. So that's only comes with experience. I cannot stress how important it is for like, for example, a guy like Mikael Prince to have moved away from Western province where he would have had the likes of Bjorn Hendricks, Dane Patterson and um, Nandre Berger in his team to going over to Northwest, coming back to Newlands and facing those three bowlers. The invaluable lessons that he would have learned from that by testing himself in that um, in that particular situation would have given him an amazing amount of development and push forward from all points of view. So I just thought that I'd talk about this particular topic and bring it to you guys, give you something to think about. So I want you guys to also win this, once I end the stream, I want you guys to go into the comment section. Let me know what you got, what your criteria is for a player and when he's ready for a national call-up. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to see you guys debate it and, and talk about it in the actual comment section on the YouTube channel so that when people go back to watch this video or come back to watch this video, they can also engage in the conversation in the comment section below. I want you guys to make this a community where you guys can discuss certain things. So please go ahead and do that as well. So I've been your host, Khalid Modin. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Um, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, please. Very important that you do so. Um, it's it's how we're going to get to our our next milestone of 5,000 subscribers, which we're knocking on that door as well. I'll see you guys again on Friday for a Q&A session, maybe, um, with you guys, where you guys can ask me any questions. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm going to be giving like three three shows a week now as the season dies down a little bit. So as we come towards the end of the season and then pick it up again around the World Cup. Stay safe, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the evening. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace out.